It's time for the show that brings the magic right to your speakers. Ears up. What's going on, everybody? Ears up podcast. We are back with another great show. Um, you know, that's what we do. It's kind of what we do around here. We just make really great shows all the time, constantly. And this is going to be a different one. This is oh. one like we haven't done in a while where we're talking about something current, not a history. Whoa. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Oh, no. Yeah, Eric doesn't know how to react to that. Oh, dear. Uh, yeah. uh, 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 current events. I can't do it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's kind of fun well that's great what are we uh what current event are we talking about I'm gonna talk high about prices or the way that bob Iger's ruining the parks no it's not my show no it's yeah, not okay. um i am going to give five <laughs> spring things that you can do at disneyland oh and actually there's actually there's a there's an extra one so you already six? you're coming out saying that you're lying you're yeah, a liar it's, this is called clickbait oh click oh. you hear that podcast Clickbait. Five spring mm. things to do at Disneyland, plus one that you'd never guess. <laughs> yeah, the third one will melt your brain from the outside. <laughs> Where can I click this? The fourth one will make you remove your own nose with a spoon. <laughs> yeah, that'll be cool. I'm looking forward to that. Well, that's great. I like uh, I like things. My uh, my sister in law is actually in the parks right now. They went down. Uh, my niece was like, "Yeah, I'm kind of just you know I'm gonna go see my cousins. They're gonna be in Disneyland." And um, my sister-in-law, Keely, she's like, uh, oh, maybe I'll go with you. They're going out for one day. Just oh, It was yesterday. They were in the park yesterday, right? Wednesday. One day. Today. It, I think went, that's yesterday. Today's, today's Thursday. Yeah, they were, on, they were in today. Oh, she told me yesterday. Anyway, uh -oh. I guess they're driving now. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, driving down for the Bay Area for one day. One singular day. One park only. $189. Oof. <laughs> insane uh, yeah that is a, total I, I just saw a yeah. news article where it was like florida residents can get a one a, a ticket to the magic kingdom for 59 dollars. it's like why don't we ever have deals like that for 59 guess, oh because if they go like 100 days in a row or something that's not like one day one park yeah one ticket is 59 bucks they got a deal that's just for the magic kingdom so Weird. yeah i know it's uh but good for them i guess i guess yeah, yeah, their magic kingdom go is bigger much. than disneyland i guess uh, that's it yeah, yeah. Hmm. i don't know whatever anyway uh 189 bucks for no park hopper one day one park i don't know i i couldn't do it that's too much for me it's too rich for my blood but if you guys are going this spring taryn i'm sure has the the things that you can do I have some, there, there's some fun events going on. I like a fun there's event. There's some good stuff. Nice. Excellent. And then Eric has a window or something like that. We're going to talk about the history of glass or what's going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. I've got a, it, we're, we're going to talk for another like hour and a half about glass. Yeah. Like nice. we do. Okay. I love that. I love mm. that. What's up? Get ready. I forgot something on the printer. Uh-oh. <laughs> Was That's it right. my report about glass? <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's the uh, the the pie chart about the usage of glass throughout the last twenty years, and uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, while we're doing that though, while Taryn is uh, is uh, taking a vacation from the show, she's gonna go use Conti ears to travel from the studio <gasps> to the office and uh, oh. get a piece of paper off the printer. And oh. Conti ears doesn't do that for everybody. I just want to let everybody know they're not gonna book you travel in your own house. But what they are going to do is help you leave your house, which is something we don't know anything about, and go to the Disney parks. You can go to Disneyland. You can go to Disney World. You can go on Disney Cruises. You can go anywhere else. You don't even have to go to a Disney park. They will help book your trip basically anywhere you want to go. I heard they have a Disney in, in, in Paris. I haven't heard that. Is that true? And they can take you there. Really? Yeah. When did this? Well, whatever. If that, you know what? Email concierge and find out. It's rumors, you know. On Go the to concierge.com, everybody, and check them out. They will help you plan your Disney vacation. They are Disney planning experts. They can do, like, if you're going to San Diego and go to Legoland or whatever, they can, like, book you a flight or whatever. But uh, what they really do, their they're bread and butter, so to speak, their cinnamon and sugar on their churro of life is helping you take Disney themed vacation. So go to the parks with concierge. They will help book your reservations. They will do um, your, you know, make sure you're squared with Lightning Lane and Genie Plus and all that kind of stuff. 
And if you have, uh, let's say you booked a hotel and then, you know, two weeks later, there's a deal where you could have got a better price for the room. They will monitor that for you and they will get you that better deal and they will get that better deal refunded to you. And it's a whole thing. It's a full service stop. And yeah, that's it doesn't best. cost any more than what Disneyland or the Disney resorts would charge you. It's mm-hmm. free. It's icing on the cake because they want you to have a great vacation. So check them out. Concierge.com. Yep. Eric, you want to just do your window first? Why not? Why not do a window? Do a, that's what we used to do beforehand. Wow. Yeah, Taryn, it, Taryn's over there. She's she's stacking her papers. I, I mean, those need to be very, very uh, stacked. Yeah, stacked and arranged before she could do her her business. Same, um, same. How about we look above the Fortuosity store? What is a Fortuosity? And why um, do we need to buy one at a store? Uh, well, it's just a uh, fortuosity. I don't know most of the song. Um, I enjoy the song. But above one of these stores on Main Street, there is the old school, not... Um, it's not one of those windows that uh, that has a clever thing going along with it. It literally just reads D.S. Gilmore, M.D., E.J. Upjohn, M.D. With These a question are... mark at the end? or What's that? With a question mark at the end? No, no, that's like, what? just me. Oh, okay. That's yeah. just me? Uh, huh? <laughs> what? Okay, who are these people? So where is the Fortuosity store? What is? Where, where is this? What does uh, that even the... mean? This is on Main Street. This used to be the Upjohn Pharmacy. And I think I'm going to do a whole thing on the Upjohn Pharmacy Uh-oh. someday. You would too, <laughs> man. It's right where your two roads intersect. Right. Podcasting and pharmacy. <laughs> yeah. Po- radio and pills, baby. Just like it's the 80s <laughs> all over again. <laughs> Woo! Uh, the Don Imus of, uh, of podcasting. Yes. Well, I don't know. I uh, don't know if Don Amos did a bunch of drugs, but you know, whatever. Just just infer. Yeah. Yeah, it's fine. Well, this particular window brings uh, up two people that were pals of Walt Disney. Walt Disney uh, was 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 a friend of people in (laughs) uh, places uh, like the Smoke Tree Ranch. Allegedly. Allegedly, yes. He had his, uh, he met some people that lived near him at uh, his vacation destination. Uh, I, I, I don't know a lot about California, but I don't know why somebody who lives in LA would have a vacation destination in the desert of Palm Springs. But you know what? You know, this is not my place to judge. But, uh, but yeah. Uh, the two people named on this window are David S. Gil- Gilmore and E. Gifford Upjohn, who were instrumental in creating the Upjohn Pharmacy, which was on Main Street in the earliest days of the park. Now, David S. Gilmore was uh, the chairman of the board and managing director of Upjohn for a while. He was, as I mentioned, one of Walt Disney's friends. They lived near each other in Smoke Tree Ranch. They had vacation destinations there. But uh, Gilmore was the child of James Gilmore and Carrie Gilmore. Oh, did they have girls John. We called the Gil- the Gilmore girls? Uh, you know what? When you search uh, Gilmore Disney, there's a, an awful lot of Gilmore girls. Uh, uh, videos that have nothing to do with any of this. Good but, joke, right? Yeah, yeah. I no, I, I get it. I get it. That's because I, I did all these. Yeah, yeah it's fine. Right, good. Yeah, watch, watch, watch those girls. No, don't do it. It's a terrible show. No, oh, okay. But go ahead. It well, is absolutely not. How dare you? <laughs> Very funny. Very well, good show. Uh, James Gilmore, the father of David Gilmore, Started the Gilmore Brothers. I, I almost you almost said, said Gilmore, Gilmore Girls. Girls. <laughs> I almost said it. <laughs> I can't. I saw that too. I was like, oh, this boy's going to do it. <laughs> oh, He's going. No. He's going. 
Uh, Gilmore Brothers Department Store in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Uh, David was born on March 7th, 19, 19, 1895. <laughs> Happy <laughs> birthday, David. Uh, this is this is a train wreck. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, you did great. Thank you. Don't interrupt him. He, he will never get back on track. <laughs> Uh, David's father, James, uh, passed uh, at a time, and his mother remarried William Erastus Upjohn in 1913. So in 1916, uh, Gilmore married his stepsister, Genevieve Upjohn, and thus his stepfather became also his father-in-law. Dude, that is so wow. awesome because that way you can still keep it in the family, but you right, don't right. have to risk like the the crossing of the genes. Yeah, you got like that. You've got a, a an empire of uh pharmacy stuff and also yeah. department store stuff. It's yeah. great. It's perfect. Yeah. Hey step bro, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing in my pharmacy? You've got my you got your pills in my you know dry goods section. Well, you've got your dry goods section in my pills, <laughs> and thus the Reese's uh, peanut butter cup was born. Yeah. Uh, well, in 1917, Gilmore joined the board of directors of uh, the his dad's department store. But then uh, he was persuaded over to move into the other family's business in 1928. Inbreeding. <laughs> right. He joined the Upjohn Pharmacy uh, Board. And uh, in 1932, just before old W.E. Upjohn died, he was named the vice president of Upjohn Pharmacy. Is that Was that near Updog at all? <laughs> Wait, what what's I'll do it. What's up, Doc? <laughs> Not much, man. What's up with you? Woo, God damn. Let's go. Roasted. Uh... I was I was balancing on a beam going, do I, do I give I, him what he wants? Do I give it to him? <laughs> do I placate this insane maniac? The Joker of the Disney podcasting world? Oh uh, well. Um, well, you did. You earned your your tuppence. So there oh, you go. thank you. Yeah, both both tuppence, right? I got two tuppence. Tuppence, you know. Okay. Okay. Be a uh, feed, feed, feed the birds. Uh, well, uh, Gilmore moved his way up. He was the vice president. He eventually became uh, the chairman of the board of directors. Uh, this guy just kept going higher and higher. Uh, he bought a home in Smoke Tree Ranch near the near the Upjohns and the Disney family, where they all had a few uh, a, a few acres in Smoke Tree Ranch in uh, the Palm Springs area. Sure, and, so uh, relatable people, down to earth, salt right. of the earth. Yeah, yeah, yeah rich yeah. people who had vacation homes in Palm Springs. Exactly, yeah, they all became friends. Sure. Uh, David actually was an influential, 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 not, yeah, yeah influential mm -hmm. person at Up, Upjohn Pharmacy, where he helped expand the, uh, the kind of empire uh, pretty significantly over his time working there. And then he kind of retired. He opened up a, uh, a car museum in Kalamazoo, Michigan. He purchased the Rolls Royce from Walt Disney's classic live action film, The Gnome Mobile. You all remember The Gnome Mobile? I have it on Blu-ray, dude. Oh, yeah. It, yeah. I love I love the live action. I still got to do a show about those. But like every time I hear about one, it it's just like someone invented a, a movie and they're trying to see if you know if it's real or not. In this like, one, I've never, I've never heard of the gnome mobile. <laughs> it's ever. so great. What What's great about this movie? They not only have a classic Rolls Royce in the movie, they built a giant 
back seat of the Rolls Royce to have people sitting in to make them look like small people. Oh man, God bless <laughs> practical effects. You know, I just came up with a, with a good game, and maybe I'll do, maybe I'll do it. And I'm not paying attention to Taryn's segment. I'll put get get like a list of Disney movies, and then write like live action ones, and then write <laughs> fake ones, and see if you can guess which is real and which isn't. That's, there oh are God. so many. I think I'm going to do that. Okay, that would, that would work out great. Segment. Uh, so yeah. Maybe do this another day. I'll no. I'll 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 listen. I promise. Okay. You, you can test me. <laughs> well. Great. I'll listen. I promise. <laughs> wink, wink. Yeah, go oh ahead. Oh, my. Sorry. Sorry. Well, after Walt went and testified before the uh, Senate subcommittee about communism, he visited the uh, the uh, the car museum in 1964 before it was opened. It Literally two years before the museum opened and uh, two years before Walt himself died. Uh, Gilmore died in 1979. The other person on this window is E. Gifford Upjohn. He was born in 1904. He died in 1993. He was a, a nepo baby. I, I don't. I don't have anything else to say about E. Gifford Upjohn right. until we do an episode about the Upjohn Pharmacy, and even then, I won't talk much about E. Gifford Upjohn. So he he got a window for being someone's kid. Yeah, that was kind of it. In the early days, uh, yeah, lucky, it, it was lucky like, kid. yeah, you know what? Why not? Love it. Great. Good job. Was that it? That was those. That, that was the window. That was the window. Good job. There's nothing else about the window. Where right. is it? I don't think you fully told me where it is. Still Fort, to this Fortunista. day, Fortunista. I don't know where that is. It it's sounds above... like an Italian restaurant in friggin' downtown Disney. <laughs> it's above. It's on the corner of uh, past, uh, uh, so you know where the it, there's that like center street on 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 where Main the Street. Where the flowers are, yeah, where the flowers are, used to be sold or whatever. Right, it's on the north west corner up. Okay, so like across from like the dentist office, yeah, like the it, dental thing. No, no, no. Well, yeah, I guess above the dental thing, it's above. Uh, it, it's above what is now. Um, Carnation Cafe. I don't know why it took me so long to think of that. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. I know what you're talking about. That corner. Yeah. That's oh, where it is. that side. Because that's where there used to be a pharmacy. And we'll talk about that someday when I do uh, an exhaustive seven-hour uh, segment on the Upjohn Pharmacy on Main Street. Okay. Fascinating. Very good. Good Thanks job, for Barry. It's fascinating. <laughs> Yeah, uh, she's much more polite than I am. Mm. <laughs> what do you have to say about it, Jason? Uh, nothing I can really repeat. Um, by the way, I just sort of realized that my Chapek um, Misfits t-shirt logo ripoff sort of looks like it's, it could be a, um, a Dan. A Dan shirt. It's just Dan <laughs> as the Crim Ghost. The Crim Ghost. The Crimson Ghost. It, it kind of looks like Dan, yeah. 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 A little bit. <laughs> yeah. And see, the beauty about Dan being an improv is he can't say no. He has to say yes, and yes, it looks and. great. Yeah. Well, I oh. mean, if it's funny, you can say no. Can't. Shouldn't. Never say no. Never say no. Mm. Right. If it's no. funny, though. Never. Um. Yes, no. and you shouldn't. <laughs> what do you think of that? All right, Taryn, what do you got for us, dude? All right, so there are actually more things to do at Disneyland during springtime than I thought. Um, let's start off with my extra one. So this is actually number six um, out of five. Uh, oh, no. This month is Women's History Month, of course. And Of course. And what's interesting is um, everybody knows the famous uh, floral Mickey Mouse that you see when you walk into the park, like right below the, yes. the train station. Uh -huh. Yep. See, I'm paying attention. You are. Yeah. For the month of March, it is not Mickey Mouse. It is, in fact, Minnie Mouse. Mm. I, I feel like there's sexism going and on And I, I couldn't find this information for this year's Minnie Mouse, but I assume it's not far off. So in 2022, the horticulture team um, shared these facts about the floral. Um, 
the traditional Mickey floral design, so Mickey, not mini, uh, includes um, 1,750 individual plants. And the Minnie Mouse's bow itself consists of approximately 750 individual plants known as Amnesia. Um, okay. And then the Amnesia, okay. did you spell it wrong? Nope. Okay. I copied and pasted. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the swirls uh, that are on either side of Minnie Mouse's face um, contain over 1,900 individual plants, including pansies, violas, and petunias. Hmm. So that's kind of a nice thing, and that's going on currently. So what's interesting, though, is it's not it, – Minnie is not there the entire month of March, generally. They actually start on March 1st. So only, like, over the last day or two have you actually seen her completed. Oh, it's come, it comes together over time. Yeah. Okay. That's neat, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so that's uh, number six. That was uh, – but it's the first on my list because I'm going in um, – chronological order so the next on the list um, of things to do during the spring at disneyland and i guess this isn't just disneyland this is the disneyland resort but um so california adventures food and wine festival this is uh march 1st through april 22nd and of course this includes more than a dozen unique booths um, and celebrity demos, uh, complimentary demonstrations from local celebrity and Disney park chefs. Um, these typically take place on Saturdays and Sundays at the festival and the festival itself is free if you enter the park, but in order to take part in the festival, you do have to pay. Um, there is this thing called a sip and savor pass, which I don't remember knowing about this when we went before. We were just buying things individually. Had I known about this or if this existed back then, I would have done this. This allows guests to save money by purchasing treats from the booths in advance. Um, and for the first time this year, there's going to be two sip and savor pass options. One option with four entitlements, which I guess are the, the little dishes that you can buy. Mm -hmm. um, and then one with the the normal, the standard eight entitlements that you can redeem. Mm. Now, interestingly, magic key holders actually do have a benefit. Uh, they get an additional discount on the Sip and Saver Pass, and they receive a collectible lanyard because everybody needs a lanyard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so this year, the uh, Sip and Saver Pass costs $61 for day, uh, for day guests and $56 for magic key holders. The pass is good. That I already said that. Um, sorry, going around. Lost your way. Uh, so the new four tab pass. Um, so the eight one is sixty one dollars. The four one is thirty one, which is actually pretty good. I mean, that's like a meal, right? If you have, if you get four of those little plates, that's a whole meal. That's thirty one bucks. It actually seems like a pretty decent price. That's not bad. Yeah, that's yeah. more than a meal. Yeah. What's cool is that these tickets are good for multiple visits, so you don't have to use them in one day, which I thought was also interesting. Okay. Um, That's good. Now, before so the other thing that happens during the Food and Wine Festival is that Soarin' Over California returns, which is <laughs> far superior to all the other Soarins. But Agreed. Um, so what I had to go get off the printer was that I actually have a list of all of the available foods at the Food and Wine Festival. And I'm not going to go through all of them because that would be incredibly boring. But what I did do is I marked down what I would get. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> if money were not an issue. It's uh, Taryn is Taryn wants to be eating again. It's yes. really what it is now. <laughs> these these are the things that I would purchase and I, i'm not even going to tell you where to get them because it that would also be boring but i would get get this jason what? eagle rock brewery golden ale hey we fantastic love eagle beer. rock i would get that i would get russian river blind pig of course you would and oh i wouldn't get this one but i thought it was interesting they had it um stone brewing stone ruination double ipa that one's gonna. That is that's interesting. Gonna huh. All over. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'm not full pints. I would imagine. I mean, if they have blind pig, double. I mean, that's a double IPA. So I guess they that's... just call it an IPA. But yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, there was a double IPA, but I think it, the the styles have advanced since then. So. Yeah, these days. 
Seven percent. Who cares? I know, right? <laughs> yeah. So I, I'm essentially starting off hot with a bunch of alcohol. Yeah. Um, then I'm gonna sure. get a an sip and saver, more like sip and saver <laughs> from falling over. <laughs> Bev taught me. Yeah. Um, then an olive oil cake glazed with lemon curd, topped with vanilla bean chantilly, and finished with fresh candied lemon, strawberry crunch, and lemon lime jelly. Absolutely. Here's what oh. I want to know is how they put those together in the booth because that seems like like a patisserie shop would make it. Mm -hmm. Does it come on a tray from the back kitchens, you know, and like someone's assembly? I don't know. Chantilly seems very delicate. I bet they put the chantilly on before they hand it to you. Yeah, okay. And I bet that's the only. They're like trained. And maybe the probably. strawberry crunch because okay. otherwise right. that wouldn't probably stay crunchy. Because these booths, aren't they sponsored or manned by like different people not cast members but they're that like I representatives of of like the restaurants that rent them out or something like that eric do you know that i think Ooh, jeremy it, told me that one time it, i mean it would make sense yeah but yeah I, I, I i think it's got to be locals right i would think so brian in the chat says give me that peanut butter whiskey shake oh my god and i said no yeah list. that sounds disgusting absolutely no. not brian no <laughs> yeah give it to me because you're clo i'm closest to the garbage and so let me throw it away for you. But that does bring me to my next drink, oh, which will be a watermelon cucumber mojito. Sounds very refreshing. Yeah, sounds great. Yeah, um, that's not bad. Yeah. I yeah. This is kind of an entree for me, but a grilled top sirloin with roasted garlic gruyere, smashed potatoes, and no. black garlic chimchurri. No. Sounds great. No, sounds uh, gross. No, but it doesn't sound gross. It sounds too much like you could just go to a restaurant and buy it. Yeah. That's but that's what not you're what you're doing. I know, but that's not what I want at like a like a event where you can go pick and choose little things i want something unique i don't want it's like giving me a burger like i don't want a burger i want well, it something, still sounds good though it sounds good but it doesn't sound i wouldn't waste my ticket on it because i want to okay. try something i can't go somewhere else and get that just sounds like yeah, on yeah any fair. sort of like medium upscale restaurant okay. okay uh that's gonna go really well though with my guava lychee mule <laughs> um next i'm having a, See, I, wouldn't have a, I wouldn't have a guava lychee mule why that sounds delicious in my opinion the point of a mule like a moscow mule is that big ginger beer hit i mean it probably is but i don't care about that but guava it, and lychee i just don't just really call it whatever you want i, don't care. I think that it, as long as the the ginger's still in there i think that's gone that's awesome i don't know I don't i'm know. in i'm out okay next <laughs> i don't think you'll be in on this one either but a frozen old fashion just because i want to try it no i mean i don't know like a slushy yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, I feel like I, that's why I, I feel like it. we're on Shark Tank, but instead of Shark Tank, it's like Drank Tank, where it's like, <laughs> would I drink this? No, I don't think I would. <laughs> a slushy, I would let you get it. But the the problem I would have is like you like whenever you drink a slushy, sometimes it, it melts at the bottom and then you you drink the pure liquid and you miss out on the ice, so it's not watered the proportions wouldn't be weird. Or, yeah, I don't yeah, it's I don't not a like I don't want to do it. Uh well. Um, yeah, next is kind of boring, but it just sounded really good to me. Baja style fish tacos with cabbage slaw. So boring, but it sounds great. Um, I, I'm in. Yeah. A, eh, then a not? raspberry almond cake because you can never have too much cake. Ooh. These people, Ooh. these people have been watching too much Great British Baking Show. I love it. This is. I know. Fantastic. I think. I think yeah. it's cool. It's just very odd. Yeah. Those, very those flavors place. work though. But yeah, for sure. But like this is again, this is something you would find like in a bakery, not not roaming this i don't know it just it seems it seems um uh, i don't want to say boring because it's not but it's it's reserved <laughs> it's, but it's still, elevated for the sake of elevation <laughs> yeah kind of i don't know it's 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 elegant reservation it's different it's cool okay. it just it's a little odd it's an it's odd choice odd. yeah okay another odd choice hibiscus rose mimosa but i'm gonna try it hibiscus rose mimosa and it's going to be florally. Okay. And it might be a little weird, but what, I. What tipped you off on that? The two flowers that are in it? Yep. Okay. Got it. <laughs> um, And then this one I would be very excited about. This orange juice. It's a little juicy, <laughs> but <laughs> fine. It tastes a little like citrus. But this, is, okay. this is probably the one that I'm most excited about. Yeah. What is it? Honeydew milk tea with coconut lychee jelly topped with a creamy citrus foam. Like everything about yeah. that sounds amazing. Too many, <laughs> Too many words. Too many words. Too many words. Yeah, you lose me halfway through, and I'll be like, I don't know, man. Sure, dude. All right, this That's one's easier. Probably good. Passion fruit mojito. Heck yeah. yeah right. For sure. 
town. Yeah. Two Towns Cider House Strawberry Lemonade Cider. Yeah. Yes. Two Towns makes very good cider. They're very good. They're a little on the pricey side. Nice dudes. Make great product. Excellent. Did you pick food? Uh, there's, it, it's coming. Um, <laughs> this is all in order of what she would do. Oh, too. okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, loaded baked potato. No. Because why not? With fixins. <laughs> uh, pistachio cheesecake. Yes, Stevie, please. we can't oh. have this many fixins. Uh, charcuterie flatbread. Yes. No. And then that was all. That was my last thing. But um, a couple interesting events going on within the Food and Wine Festival event is at the Hearthstone Lounge in Disney's California Adventure. They're hosting the Vomitorium. So after you drink your <laughs> your peanut butter whiskey shake <laughs> with it, it poured into a loaded baked potato, you can go relieve yourself and get more. Yes. The um, bathroom is pretty far away from the, the lounge, let me just say. <laughs> but aside from, from experience. That, there is a, a walk on the Silverado Trail, which is essentially a wine experience. Oh, man, I love wine. Yes. Uh, and sip experiences. A curated selection of Silverado Trail's curated. exquisite wines, delightfully paired with plates specially crafted by the talented hotel culinary team. I love the term curated, especially in this context, because, it, I mean, it just, it, it, the implication there, I suppose, is that, like, someone really thought about this and gathered, but the reality is it's just selected by the winery. And so you can just call it curated. Hey guys, if you go to our podcast page, our, our, our YouTube feed, um, you all those videos like the on there are, are curated. They're curated. Mm -hmm. We have curated videos. Uh, well, what do you mean by that? Oh, well, I put them up there. So that means they're curated. I kind of like terms it, like that. I know, but it's just a weird, like it doesn't, it doesn't mean what you think it like actually really means. I don't know. It's weird. Well, at Trader Sam's, you can take a mixology class. Is that over by Updog? Oh, sorry. Hold on. Uh, the Earth, the Hearthstone Lounge, you know, wine trail thing. Yeah. Um, is April nineteenth. Okay, April nineteenth. Hey, uh, but 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 what is Updog? <laughs> Not much, man. What's up with you? <laughs> uh, at Trader Sam's uh, Enchanted yeah. Tiki Bar, available March eleventh. Oh, that's past. Uh, March twenty fifth and April eighth and April twenty second is our mixology classes. I do not have the price of these. I'm sure they are very expensive, but you could learn to make a classic tiki libation in the legendary Trader Sam's. After enjoying your handcrafted cocktail, indulge in tray past hors d'oeuvres or divorce uh, while enjoying the sound of the island, blah, blah, blah while sitting outside. Um, <laughs> so that's cool. Those are, those are fun things available to you during uh, the Food and Wine Festival through April 22nd. That sounds like a lot of fun. I'm looking it up right now if, if I can find the price of it. Uh, 159 Oh. Wow. So depending on when you go to the park, that's more than your entrance Jeez, to the ticket or to the park for the whole entire day. Learn Maybe, to make the Hippopotamai uh, yeah. one of the legendary libations served at Trader Sam's. Um, after enjoying your handcrafted cocktail, indulge in a tray hors d'oeuvres while enjoying the sounds of the yeah. Take home a tiki mug as a souvenir of your adventure. So you get to learn how to make the hippopotamai tie and you get a tiki mug. And you get to drink it. And you get to drink it and then you get free hors d'oeuvres. And unfortunately, it's bucks. me playing the ukulele. That is a lot of money. <laughs> I got one string on my ukulele. Uh, yeah. Includes three-hour parking validation at Disney oh. Land Hotel self-parking. Mm. Beauty. Okay. All right. So next up, we have... Easter at Disneyland. Easter um, at Disneyland. You know what? Actually, hold that thought. Put a pin in it. We're going to take a quick break. Yes, We're going to come back. We're going to resurrect this segment. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So uh, hmm. hang around. We'll be right back. It's ears up. All right. Hang on. Back to ears up where the opinions never stop. Ever. All right. Thanks for sticking around, everybody. Okay. All right, Taryn, let's go. So we're talking about Easter at Disneyland, and there are several things going on, things to do. Um, the first thing is something that I've always heard about and I've always wanted to do, and I've never actually gone around. I, I mean, very rarely do we go around uh, spring. Yeah, it's, mainly we avoid spring break at all costs. Yeah, So although we did get engaged during spring there. Oh. Yeah. Oh. March 4th. What were we thinking? Um, well, that was you. 
you were you what were was thinking. i thinking i don't know All right, well. uh so the egg extravaganza which is a disney style egg hunt guests search high and low for characters painted on eggs there's things like a donald duck egg might be placed on a window ledge and these are not tiny eggs these are giant eggs big eggs like on the on main street window <laughs> okay um or uh, in the nook of a doorway while a goofy egg might be spotted next door. So they're kind of all over the park. They're also all over downtown Disney and all over DCA. So you pick up a map and um, a set of stickers for $9.99 plus tax um, at certain locations. And then you search for these hidden eggs. And when you find one, you put the sticker on the map. And so the map kind of tells you where to look, like a generally speaking. Okay. Um, I don't think this is a very difficult task. It's not like Hidden Mickey's. It's like I imagine it's probably family friendly as far as like yeah. uh, you know every, people of every skill le level could do. Yeah. It. You could probably okay. find. Yeah. It. I I yeah. think I could even do it. Yeah. yeah. Um when you're done, you return your map to a redemption location and receive exciting keepsakes. Uh, like what? Mm. Like an AP magnet from 5 years ago? Exciting. No, I I got it. Yeah. Mm. Um, you get one of six collectible themed, um, I don't know what you would call it. It's, it's like, a. it looks like a pin. It's like a metal thing. Okay. Like a metal egg. Okay. This year's is like a little metal egg, flat metal egg. And then it's on like a, a lanyard, but not like a neck lanyard, like a wrist lanyard. Very odd. Huh. Mm, okay. But it looks cute. It's cool. Cause the, the little egg part is cute. Um, it's probably the cheapest souvenir at the parks. <laughs> probably for ten bucks. For ten, ten bucks, you know what I mean? yeah. And like you get a bunch of walking around. The thing, because also yeah. you don't have to finish the map to get your token. No, you could sit there. You can buy it and and not leave the line and just sit there and put all the st stickers on him. Like you don't you even have to do that. You yeah. just go back to the redemption center and say, "I want my, I keepsake." Hmm. But yeah, maybe. But generally, you feel bad like, about yourself. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's hard to feel worse about myself. So this is only available through April 9th. Map Redemption um, has to be done by then. Sounds like a good band name, by the way, Map Redemption. <laughs> but there are three different game boards, which means that you can get three different keepsakes, right? If you do this sure. three times. They are, you know, $10 each. But honestly, even 30 bucks to do this, like as an activity maybe for your kid, in downtown Disney and Disneyland and DCA, like. Oh. Do, but do the eggs change the location? Because once you've done it once, you don't want to do it again, right? No, no, no. But like, there's three different game boards. Oh. Uh... So there's one for each of those places. Mm, got it. So okay. The Disneyland one is only in Disneyland, kind of thing. Cool. But it's kind of neat. I would definitely do that. That to me seems like an actually. Um. I can't think of the word. Worthwhile but spend. Worthwhile spend. Yes. There you go. And Don't worry, I'll give you the words to say. <laughs> Thanks, Jason. Yeah, you're welcome. I can always count on you for that. Yeah. Um, there are Easter novelties. The two this the two big ones this year is a uh, Donald Duck spring egg sipper cup. Okay. So it's like a an egg, kind of in the shape of well, no, it Donald Duck in the shape of an egg, and it's a cup. Okay. And then okay. of course Chip and Dale spring basket popcorn bucket. Of course. Everybody needs a popcorn bucket. Yeah. Um, there's also some Easter themed food throughout um the resort at Disneyland, available through April 9th at the Candy Palace, uh, Candy Kitchen and Pooh Corner. You can get uh Easter eggs, which are chocolate. There's chocolate and then peanut butter flavor. So those 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 are like big giant like seas candy chocolate egg things, kind of hmm. like that. Um, bunny cake pops, bunny rice crispy treats. Strawberry Mickey wand churro. Um, I think that's a churro. It actually didn't say churro, but I can't imagine what else a strawberry Mickey wand would be. <laughs> Except maybe a pretzel. I don't know. Like, I don't know. So I I'm hope it's go a with, churro. I'm going to go with churro. Um, at the Jolly Holiday Bakery for uh, springtime, you can get a tuna sandwich with chips, which I'm surprised I don't have that all year long. Like, I'd get a tuna sandwich. Anyway. <laughs> At DCA. No, you wouldn't, first of all. But I am I agree with you. I'm surprised that that's not available year round. I might. I actually really like tuna sandwich. I like them too, but I I feel like anyway. A theme ahead. park tuna sandwich? <laughs> yeah, I don't right. know. Thank you. Oh, yes, no. okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Like Did nothing. You have sounds... an episode about this? 
Nothing sounds better than walking around Disneyland just being hot and kind of sweaty and maybe a little bit sore and go, you know what I need is barely under room temperature tuna fish sandwich. This was like episode three. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. I, I made them and I, they weren't the worst thing I've ever had. I did like them. They were just too sweet because of the, it was the wrong kind of pickle. Sure, man. It was the right kind of pickle for them, but not for me. It was the wrong kind of decade, I think, to yes. manufacture something like that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, over at DCA at Smoke Jumpers Grill, you can get fish and chips, beer battered local rockfish, and crinkle cut fries served with rem- remoulade, slaw, and lime. I don't know, whatever. Uh, Grand Californian Hotel. They have Mickey Mouse shaped Easter donuts and bunny cupcakes. They also have Easter bunny or Easter basket cookies, uh, carrot cake loaf, which looked delicious, um, Easter cookie treat box. And then they have a waffle cookie shot with a choice of milk, chocolate milk, strawberry milk, or alcohol. <laughs> and I did not see any specifics for this year's, but last year there were lots of articles about this shot which they also did during winter time that you could actually end up paying $185 for this oh, shot. No. Because you can get this waffle cookie shot filled, I think, with yeah. like anything you want. I uh, we did a whole thing on so top they, shelf. It was like Louis the something. And yeah. so yeah, so this is back. And uh <laughs> so if you are looking for the waffle cookie shot, you go to the uh Grand Californian Hotel Holiday Cart. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Please, please, listeners, don't don't mix top shelf alcohol with, <laughs> with waffle <a> cones. <laughs> uh, un, uncooked cookies. Yes. Yeah. No, yeah. don't do that. But if you do, uh, video yourself <laughs> taking it because I would love to see your reactions. Yeah. Please email it to uh, me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to Bob at Disney.com. Um, at Downtown Disney has the same things that the other places have: bunny cake pop, bunny rice krispie treat, and the strawberry Mickey wand. So aside from some fun, ex- some fun exciting treats, stop doing that. I won't. <laughs> yes. uh, there are also special characters around this time of year. Okay. Um, on Main Street, you may come across the actual Easter Bunny. What? Yes, ma'am. No way. Oh yeah. He roams uh, around Disneyland, wow. along with many of his bunny friends, the White Rabbit, Thumper. Wait, they know each other? Rabbit from Winnie the Pooh, Bro. Roger Rabbit, and Oswald. Can you imagine Roger Rabbit and Thumper being friends? Yeah, I guess they would. They feel like I feel like they would do drugs together in like high school. <laughs> oh my god! They seem a little ADHD. Uh, yeah, yeah. If, if Roger's there, like that's that's very exciting. They were just um, doing different drugs. That's all. I don't know. I feel like I feel like Roger. I feel like Thumper would steal Roger's uh, Ridlin. Yeah, that's my, yeah, that's my thought. Thumper. I, see, I was thinking Rabbit from Winnie the Pooh. Okay. Yeah. 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 No, Rabbit would narc on them. Are oh, you yeah, boys for sure. rolling up in here? Uh, yeah. Brr, please, <laughs> rabbit. I'm just trying to get high. Gosh. This <laughs> took a turn. Um, yeah, suddenly my Roger Rabbit is towelly from South Park. <laughs> yeah, it definitely Oh, was. man. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Um, oh, okay. Ryan says that the Mickey wand is a skewer of marshmallows. Well, sure. Why wouldn't it be? I'd, ra- I'd rather a churro. Honestly, but... so yeah. was our political system, which is weird. <laughs> Just a, a, a good one. long line of marshmallows. <laughs> Makes no sense. Okay, next up on the list. I think this brings us to number three or something. I don't know. Yeah. Season of the Force. It, oh. It, now we're talking about Destiny. Okay, <laughs> this is the new season of Destiny. This is centered. Uh, this is a Star Wars-themed spring event and okay. it's centered around the the holiday may the 4th okay right? i love it yeah. uh this is actually returning for the first time since 2015. great uh this is going to be april 5th through june 2nd and a couple of things that are happening um one i sent you a link to the to this but hyperspace okay. mountain is returning oh good um, and you know what makes this different is that there's star wars ship projections um in outer space with the sky visible is it ship right i said ship okay. yes 
Um, the story of this overlay puts guests in the cockpit of an X-Wing fighter in the middle of a fight with the Empire. The squadron that takes part in this battle is named Blue 77 Squadron as a reference to Luke's original X-Wing concept, which was changed from blue to red, and 77 as a reference for the year 1977 when Star Wars was released Boo. and Space Mountain opened at Disneyland. Boo. Um, it's it's mostly uh, Mon Calamarian yelling at you, and then um, it's it's a roller coaster. We've got to save everybody. Well, Be so, careful. So, and with a horse, play with him. Probably the most you the most noticeable change is that uh, the score is changed for Space Mountain during Hyperspace Mountain. That's true. Um, yeah. And here's a little clip. Yeah, it's it's sped up 100. percent Get it? Hyper, hyper. Oh, oh my gosh, I was just in there, the lights were low. I kept the punch it in there for you guys. <laughs> um i love it <laughs> so i have no problem with hyperspace mountain because it's still the same ride and i love that ride uh next up there are there will be new star tour scenes debuted oh during season of the force uh this was announced back in september 2023 and what we know at this point is that it's going to feature new scenes uh, i'm gonna need help but new scenes from the ah ahsoka series uh -huh. mm -hmm. yeah from disney mm -hmm. plus which the article i read said that ahsoka is the most popular star wars character and i cannot i cannot make sense of that that cannot be the mm -hmm. most popular star wars character i feel like maybe of of the new of, of like the, maybe the, the the animated or something like that but yeah she there's no there's no shot that she is the most popular star wars character there's just no there's no way because she, you can tell she's not in the parks and right. she's well, not chewbacca right right come on yeah she's not come on. darth vader or luke or <laughs> yeah. princess leia or like i mean come on ahsoka is, <laughs> is pretty cool she's she's pretty cool as or a hannibal solo <laughs> I love Hannibal Solo or Lucas Lucas Skywalker. Now, um, probably my favorite part of this season of the Force that I would be really excited to see. Or Jafar the Hut. Has anyone no. ever done that mashup? Jafar and Jabba the Hut? I don't think so. Man, that'd be sick. Get on that's, DeviantArt, that's Eric, and look do. that that's up. That's your next t-shirt. Right. Yeah. Right. Hang yeah. on. Yeah. <laughs> I don't I don't wanna I don't, no, don't do I don't it. want this yeah, in my Ryan search history. She's okay, good. in the parks, and I was gonna say I bet I'm sh positive she's in the. Well, parks. You recently because of because of the oh. show, but like she, yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um. So my favorite part of this season of the Force is that in Galaxy's Edge they are debuting a different perspective on the Disneyland fireworks. So if you you can actually watch the the regular fireworks show. That you would see on Main Street, it's visible from if you stand close to the Millennium Falcon in what? Nothing. Nothing. What did I say? No, you didn't say anything. Okay. You said Millennium, and I'm always in my head saying Millennial, and so I for a second oh. there thought you said what I was thinking. Okay. Yeah, I, thought, I, I doubled. I you like, did it right. I, I did like, it no, wrong. It's Millennium. Yeah. Okay. Right. Um. So you can see it if you stand close to the Millennium Falcon. My in brain's Galaxy's just Edge. too cooked from the internet. I apologize. Uh. But this new fireworks edition is not a new fireworks show. But what they're doing is they're, when you're in Galaxy's Edge, they're playing a different soundtrack to the same fireworks. That's show. cool. I, I like think that. it's very cool. Yeah. I really like this idea. So, um, from my understanding, um, and chat will absolutely correct me if I'm wrong. Just, just say Ryan. But <laughs> Ryan <will laughs> yeah. correct me if I'm wrong. You know, wrong. Who. Oh, yeah. Ryan. But, um, I think this is the first time they've done it. So we actually haven't seen this yet, but this sounds to me like a really good idea and like really it. cool if they can pull it off. Yeah. I think that's going to be neat. Uh, next up is a day that has been around for a very long time, but it does take place in spring and it is Dapper Day. Oh, okay. 
Yeah. Dapper Day for spring this year is April 6th and 7th. Uh, that's when the expo is. The actual Dapper Day is Sunday, April 7th. Um, but at the expo, so this thing has really blown up since the day the day that we went. Yeah. Um, but And even then it was super popular. Yeah. Uh, so for the expo, you pay money, which I did not know. Um, but early bird entry is $29. General admission is 19 Children under 12 are free. And in the expo, you can shop nearly 30,000 square feet of a marketplace. Uh, and these are handpicked new and vintage clothing and accessory vendors. Um, this There's local cosmetics and grooming brands, jewelry, eyewear, shoes, hats, like anything you can think of. There's pop-up salons throughout. You can get... You, you can get your little your little shave your little hot shave you can get your hair done up in those like curly weird things like oh God. i mean just anything the you hipsters can dream yeah absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, i mean yeah. it's like fred meyer but for hipsters i did not see this written anywhere and so that's why i i i'm now i'm saying it but i didn't write it down but on their website i think i saw a picture of somebody getting a tattoo also oh, please <laughs> I really do. I, it looked like somebody was getting a tattoo, and I was like, it doesn't say it, so I'm not going to write it down. I but want I Day 2024. Swear. Yeah. yeah. Like, it, instead of mom, it says Mickey. Mickey. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, they, I hate, I, never you're going to like this, though. Okay. On their website. It closes, and I love that. My favorite Stop. part about Dapper Day is when Let it's people over. people have fun. I am. I you can look. Go. I don't care. Everyone, do whatever you Ed want. Ed Hardy will be there. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they made a note on their website that for health and safety reasons, they do not want anyone feeling obligated to attend the expo if they've paid for it, if they're not feeling well. So if you pay for this and you're not feeling well and or you test positive for COVID, they ask that you request a refund instead of attending the event. Can you imagine just dragging oh. your, your <laughs> girlfriend? I need to get my tattoo. <laughs> but Barry, I have COVID. <laughs> I don't put a mask on. It doesn't matter anymore. Put the diaper <laughs> on your face and let's go. Um, I'm getting a cherry blossom tattoo. Like Arizona iced tea. Good. Uh, my favorite part of Dapper Day Even then good. and now it, yeah. is that there are special hotel rates on the Disneyland hotels and some. Are there still? The I thought they hotels. weren't doing that anymore. Oh, no, because we it. got that screaming deal for California hotel, a grand Californian casino and hotel card room or whatever. And, uh, I thought yeah. the, the year after that, they didn't, they weren't offering it. So we like never really went no, back. They were still doing it. They never stopped. We just, oh. I think it just wasn't as good of a deal the next time. Oh, maybe. Yeah. You just turned your back on the casino life. That's all. <laughs> yeah. When you win so much. So like yeah. I said, the actual dapper day is Sunday, April 7th. And this is, nothing more than dressing up at Disneyland and it's very uncomfortable. It's very hot. It is not <laughs> worth it, but just let people have fun. Terry, Re remind me what, what dapper is. Cause am I going Victorian or am I, am I like a greaser? 40s. What, what, what greaser. Am I? It's like Zoot suit kind of greaser guy. Twenties, twenties, forties. The way okay. it started is it, it started actually back in the day as dress like Walt. What would Walt wear? to the park and a then it started becoming like and a what cigarette would, essentially like wear what people would wear on day one you know what i hope they do is at this little thing they put they put fake uh like nicotine stains on your fingers that would be let's go authentic walt <laughs> i don't think we've ever talked about dapper day without you making a cigarette joke i'm pretty sure yeah. like we should I go mean, back through the archives and find out if there has ever been a time uh, I mean, I'm that. in. I, I've never smoked a cigarette, but if it's if that's allowed on Dapper Days, then I'm oh, in. Oh man, just walk around like dressed like what Walt wear, but walking around asking if uh, if uh, anyone took your lighter. You've never smoked a cigarette. I have never smoked a cigarette. I've smoked wow. cigars. I've smoked. Oh, it's same a thing, pipe. just smaller. <laughs> and then you inhale them. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah no, I don't. Good I don't want. You. I don't want that in my lung. I I just no. want it in my cheeks. That's all. That's right. And in your gums and on your tongue. Where, right. Yeah. Right. I tell you, as for as dumb as cigarette smoking is and how damaging it is and how stupid it is, 
it's one of the coolest feelings you can have. Oh, I'm just really going to be is. honest. Yeah, like you feel like uh, you yeah. look the coolest because generally you do. You kind of do. Yeah. Yeah, it's the worst thing because that's the only thing that it has going for it. It it's doesn't worst, feel good. It doesn't taste thing. good. It doesn't smell good. There's it's not, Oh, no, it, it smells. Kills, it literally kills you. It smells you. good. It smells Cigarettes good? smell good? I mean, you're high. Only no, when you first no. light it because that's the paper. The paper no, smells no, good. No, the, the, the tobacco. The tobacco smells good. Wow. I don't know. Yeah, you're weird. Dude. I'm surprised you've never smoked a cigarette then. I've never smoked a cigarette. Oof. Mm. I do not think it smells good. Um, back to Dapper Day. <laughs> um, like I said, it's it's just dressing up at Disneyland. I did not see this on their website, but in the past when we did it, and we didn't take the picture, but they do a giant group photo in front of the castle. It's possible that it's too big now and they don't do that anymore. I don't know. They used but... to do it on the Mark Twain. Oh, oh. that's yeah. cool. It is cool, but I think that's, I think to your point, Taryn, that's how small it used to be. Yeah. And that's not small. That's still big, but like now it's in front of the castle because it's just, yeah. How many of them were smoking on the uh, the Mark Twain? (laughs) (laughs) Um, Okay. Well, next up, we have Pixar Fest. Now, this is later, a little bit later. This is April 26th through August 4th. And you've been seeing the commercials because I've been seeing the commercials. Um, and I don't even have cable. So uh, this uh, is actually the first time that this is happening since 2018. And we don't know a lot of specific details on this this year's uh, Pixar Fest, but it is designed to, quote unquote, bring guests together of a celebration. That doesn't, that's not even a proper sentence. <laughs> I copied and pasted. This is not my right. Oh, no. Bring guests together of a celebration of friendship and beyond. Which I'm sorry, but beyond friendship is a little. Uh, that's a, that's too touch much of a go there. Yeah, I'm sorry, <laughs> Disney. I'm married. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I mean, uh, talk to her about it. I, I don't, you know, whatever. But like, it's not. It's a little know, weird. Yeah. Um, things that you can expect at Pixar Fest. My um, favorite thruple is you, me, and then the Disney spirit. Yes. Um, and just to clarify, I actually thought Pixar Fest was just at DCA, and this is it is not. It is across the whole resort. Of course, why not? Why wouldn't it why wouldn't it make sense to have Pixar Fest in the area that they overtook for P- Pixar specifically, but then just have it spill out over the whole resort? Why no, not? Why, why not why, why not well. break those boundaries? Now? Because you can get merchandise. And actually, some of the merchandise seems pretty cool. There's like collectible medallions, which I don't care about, but there's like things like Pizza Planet baseball caps, which is cool. Okay. Um, also, there is probably one popcorn bucket that I have ever gone, oh, <laughs> I think I want oh, no. that one. And it's the Pizza Planet truck. And it looks mm. like the Pizza Planet That's truck. That's cool. I'm it's- surprised they don't have a Pizza Planet pop up at like South by Southwest this year. Yeah. It, yeah. So it's got like the yo on the back and oh, it's got it, it looks like the truck. Like if you Google it, I'm sure it'll come up. But like it is it's I was like, oh, that's accurate. And when when you do something accurate, I'm I'm kind of all in. Um, Just like everything else, there's themed menu items. Uh, Pixar Fest. There's a cake, a Pixar Fest cake from the Plaza Inn. Three layers, Pixar colors, it's yellow, blue, red. Uh, I yeah. don't know. Yeah. Um, May 10th. <clears throat> so on May 10th, what? What is happening? Those those are the colors. There's a cake. <laughs> Just, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, of course there's a cake. There's always a cake. Do we? Can we buy the whole cake or do we just have to get a slice? Just, but like, just a slice. And it's almost like the description was just an afterthought of like, <laughs> there's, there's a cake. Uh, and it has stuff on it <laughs> because it's like i've already said all this it's like all the same stuff it's just now, why are you saying it because it's happening oh, okay. now <laughs> instead of it being an easter cake now it's a pixar cake when like, will now be now right now soon so just like i said everything just gets recycled so may 10th now let's remember is there a cake <laughs> i'm sure there is but um I'm just going to go back up for one sec. So the Food and Wine Festival ends April 22nd. On May 10th, uh, there are six Pixar-themed marketplaces that are going to be 
featured in Disney California Adventure and are going to be available throughout the festival. And these are essentially replacing or extending, I guess, um, the food and wine festival. Okay. So there's going to be summertime dishes inspired by Italian. Interesting. Uh, the Italian coast at, oh. I'm not going to. It's, Fantastic. It's I love about, the Italian coast about stuff California. Stuff about Luca. Okay. Italian oh, coast okay. food From to do Luca. with Luca. I wonder if they're going to keep the booths up. Or tear oh, them all are. down and then to okay. Oh, oh, and then put them back up. Yeah, yeah that part I don't know. They got a few weeks. Got yeah. a couple weeks there. Yeah. Um, reimagined classics at Gusto's to go themed to Ratatouille. Um, uh, a melange, 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 melange of, melange of uh, elements at the elemental table, inspired by Elemental. <laughs> I uh, would love that. We're just like it's a puddle, <laughs> some and a candle, and like some sand. <laughs> yeah. And then a fan. He's like, here you go. <laughs> Here's you your go. melange of, of elements, everybody. <laughs> Basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, fun foods, perfect for a tween. I love foods. Boy band I love or anyone, foods. really, at yeah. Four Town Favorites. Four Town four Favorites. Town favorite. That's funny. Okay. And that's from Turning Red. Yeah. Uh, feel good foods uh, to feed your soul at the Spark, inspired by Soul, which you know that's going to be the best one, hands down. Oh, absolutely. Well, um, it depends on what it's going to be. I don't know. It's got to be soul food. Yeah. Which is going to be great. Um, and then flavors to appeal to all of your emotions at Hanger Management from Inside Out. That's funny. It is. There you so go. they've done a good job here. Yeah. Um, there's a new daytime parade in Disney California Adventure called Better Together, a Pixar Pals celebration. This is going to run twice a day, featuring high energy dancing and appearances from over two dozen Pixar characters, including characters from Luca, Soul, The Incredibles, Turning Red, Coco, Toy Story, and Monsters, Inc. You know what's great about listening to you read the way the Disney markets is that it just sounds different than when I'm like reading it because the first thing I thought was, imagine if they just didn't put the word high energy in front of dancing. <laughs> then you would go, oh, and there's going to be dancing. And then in my mind, I would go, what are people going to do? Just be doing like the, the box trot? <laughs> Or just like the square dance box, like oh, but high energy. Oh well, now <laughs> now you understand. Yeah, no, now I paint a picture. Now I understand. It's weird, man. It's like <laughs> high energy dancing. What else is there? Dancing and it, it is not. Most non- Americans high just kind of sway. I mean, come on. <laughs> I it, mean, most, most white 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 folk. Yeah, are we talking we about like like, like yeah, yeah white people mm. at a blues festival dancing? That's high energy. <laughs> or are we talking about like, I don't know. I can't think of low energy dancing. I really can't. Sorry. Mm, Go that's ahead. That's all right. Uh, mm. There's also Together Forever, a Pixar nighttime spectacular. And this celebrates the unbreakable bonds between pals, such as Woody and Buzz mm. for Pixar Fest. Unbreakable. Oh. Didn't they like uh, get in like several yeah, fights they, they, and broke up after a while? Fighting. And then didn't Woody in the in the end of four leave? Yeah, Woody left together. in four. <laughs> yeah, unbreakable my yeah foot <laughs> but he still he still has has a a friendship with his old his pals number. yeah they'll yeah. call yeah i mean he left w- for a lady but you know it's fine yeah well sometimes in life we do that right yeah uh this is going to highlight moments like pixar pals meeting for the first time and barking on new adventures and overcoming challenges and forming everlasting bonds so every disney movie ever right uh there's also a special uh, Castle Flyover by Buzz Lightyear and The House from Up. And I have a video of this and I do apologize. It is more visual. I'm hoping you get at least some idea of it through sound, but basically like the castle is, you know, it's all lit up and stuff for the fireworks show, but then the up house flies right behind it. It's, it's incredible. Yeah, let's watch, won't we? Literally made me cry this afternoon. So it's like uh, that wire that I think Tinkerbell used to fly on. It's just... You oh, and me kids. together oh. That's how it that, always should be I can tell you the wrong time to stand. One more than that. Longer than that usually, but... Oh. The other. There you go. It's neat. Still looks cool. It's it's really pretty neat. It looks real. Yeah. Um, Yeah, that's pretty cool. It was neat. Yeah. 
Uh, there are new scenes added to this nighttime spectacular th this year, featuring characters and moments from Onward, Soul, Luca, Turning Red, and Elemental. Now, uh, over at DCA, everyone's favorite club, Pixar. Now, this is a nighttime party in ho the Hollywood back lot, featuring an interactive DJ, live performances, games, photos, op photo ops, themed foods, and drinks. What's an interactive DJ? Don't know, okay. but wasn't going to take that word out all right yeah why would you yes. increase the bpm yeah yeah oh we have a request for a 198 bpm let's go <laughs> um and then there's pixar play pixar pals playtime party and this is actually this is back in disneyland quad peas baby at the fantasy land a theater dance and play <laughs> fantasy land theater Everybody okay. know where we're at? Sure, dude. Right in front of Toontown, Absolutely. to the side, whatever. Um, this is a high-energy show, interactive games and activities inspired by Pixar feature films, as well as a selection of iconic shorts on the big screen. Okay. That's kind of cool. And lastly, last on my list. Well, last note. I don't care. Uh, rare character sightings for Pixar. Uh-oh. The rares, baby. Rare alert. Which Let's go. The first one is Incredibles, but I didn't think that was that rare. I feel like I see them every time I'm there. But hmm. anyway, um, some new characters, Ember and Wade from Elemental, okay. Red Panda May from Turning Red, and okay. the Inside Out characters. And cool. that is what you can do at springtime. Good job, Taryn. Thanks. All right. That was fantastic. I can't wait to hear about all of it going on. Yes. <clears throat> Speaking of things going on, Summer is just around the corner. I know spring hasn't even sprung yet, but summer is right around the corner. Uh, this weekend in this Bay Area that we live in, it's going to be like 77 degrees and windy, which is awesome. It's always good. But our friends at the 21st Amendment are welcoming the warmer weather with open arms and a refreshing favorite, hell or high watermelon wheat. Picture this if you can. If you can, if your mind's eye isn't... Uh, red and bloodshot from uh, listening to Taryn's uh, awesome description of what's going on in spring. You got a sunny day, the smell of barbecue in the air, and a cold, crisp, hell or high watermelon wheat in your hand. It is the ultimate summertime companion, perfect for those unforgettable gatherings with friends and family. But what makes hell or high watermelon so special, you're asking me, Taryn? I'm sure that's what you're staring at me for. It's not just its bright straw color or tight white bubbles. No, it's the subtle blend of a wheat beer with a hint of sweet biscuit and a kiss of juicy watermelon that sets it apart. I would say a French kiss, maybe, like you're in oh. high school again. Oh. Yeah. A little bit of with tongue, its okay. With its refreshing flavor and delightful light fruit notes, Hell or High Watermelon is bound to become your go-to summer beer. And at just 4.94 ABV, you can enjoy it all day long without missing a beat. So when you're looking for that perfect beverage to complement those sunny days and backyard barbecues, look no further than Hell or High Watermelon Wheat. Find it wherever great craft beer is sold and make it this summer one to remember. I will say that is basically like if you had to take summer and represent it in a beverage, it would be Hell or High Watermelon Wheat. And I'm not just saying that because Sully's going to listen to this to make sure I did the read. Um, I really firm, firmly believe that. There you my, go. My dad. That was literally, you know what? I bet if it weren't for that beer, we wouldn't be married. Because <laughs> that's what got my dad into brewing, which got him to listen to the Brewing Network, which made him know who you are, which made that my parents introduce me to, well, sort of introduce me to you at that beer fest. Oh. It's all to do with watermelon wheat. So I am Sully to go <laughs> pound sand. <laughs> Okay, I'm just sorry. I was doing my to-do list. I apologize. Man, I, I, my goodness, just to be in the middle of all of this. <laughs> wow. A terrible cricket. Forgot about that. Uh, let's do a little news. March in the past, present, and future with all the news that's fit to cover. It's the Ears Up Disney News. All right, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, things that I actually like right now. I'm going to, oh. I'm going to, I'm going to do this. And I think it's going to be amazing. And is it just shows over? <laughs> is it just your wife and your child? No, no things no. I actually like. <laughs> Eric. 
Things I'm happy that exist in this world. Um, so normally I talk about uh, popcorn buckets and how stupid they are. And I wanted to share this. Uh, AMC Theaters is going to carry exclusive Ghostbusters Frozen Empire popcorn buckets. And this is old news. If you're in the Discord, I already posted this. It's from last month. But I wanted to share it on here because I need these. And yeah, I have amazing. never understood the, the uh, trap, for lack of a better term, um, of the disney popcorn bucket mm -hmm. than i do with this i love a ghostbusters i haven't seen any of the new movies because i like the i, I like the old ones better i'm that's that's what i'm in but these aren't just like ray stance popcorn bucket or whatever it's the ghost trap as a popcorn bucket that looks fantastic it looks awesome and i need them I, I need them. I don't know what to say. I don't know what else to say, but I, I, I need these. It looks, it Look looks at that. 80s too. Like it looks, it doesn't, it, it, they did a good job. They did a great job. And they have a Slimer one too, which oh, man. I'm not, not as good. But, <laughs> it's not as good because well, it's holding a popcorn bag of its own. It says Sin Mark on it. It's like, okay, cool. Great. But Slimer is pretty awesome. But dude, I, uh, and then they have an Ecto one. Look at that. Look at this. Wow. That looks awesome but the amc one is definitely the best one. Oh, absolutely yeah, yeah the trap for sure yeah gotta have it gotta absolutely have wow. it so uh look if, if anybody i don't know how to get them i guess you go to the movie theater if anybody yeah, wants to pick me up on please do i will pay for it <laughs> thank you all right we're doing some news here we go remember our old friend gina carano oh yes Crazy. oh Crazy lady from uh, um, yeah, she, she uh, supposedly what she says and what the media sort of like picks up on is that she got fired from the Mandalorian. But what I've heard and I can't remember like too too many details about it because um, my brain has to fill with other stuff that you know, let me function is that she wasn't fired so much as she just wasn't her contract wasn't renewed. That's the same thing though. It's not okay. really. That's the same thing. I mean, yeah. so, kind of, but like, if you don't have a contract and you're wait and, and you're waiting to see if you're renewed, and they say we're not going to renew your contract, it's still a failure. It's not a firing though. So she's suing. No. So that's Disney, an out. Yeah. Well, Gina she Carano. Has nothing to sue for. Though. Correct. Gina Carano <laughs> on suing Disney. She says, "quote It feels good to fight back." Gina Carano isn't backing down from her years-long fight with former employer Disney. In an interview with a Hollywood reporter, the actress who was fired from The Mandalorian in 2021 over her social media posts recounted the, quote, disrespect and shame she felt after the firing and said it felt good to fight back with a wrongful termination lawsuit. So, um, <clears throat> I don't know if you know this, but her uh, lawsuit is being funded, financed by Elon Musk. Because he had a thing where it's like, if you're ever sued uh, because of something you said on Twitter, then I will pay for your, you know, lawsuit or whatever. And so he's, I mean, he's, I mean, he's, he's making good on his thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Quote, I think it's pretty incredible what he is doing, she said. <laughs> a lot of billionaires put their money into buying islands and building bunkers. Elon Musk is using like his, Elon Musk. using his, Elon Musk is using his money to fight massive injustice battles. <laughs> Oh my god already this you... is where this is where her brain is she thinks that oh. he's like the hero of free speech but it's it's you know, really I hate not this woman because she has no case there's nothing to argue if if they didn't renew your contract there's no uh, you didn't get fired there's literally what you're fighting for doesn't, doesn't exist. exist right <laughs> musk and carano were both reprimanded by disney over anti-semitic posts musk shared a conspiracy theory that jewish people supported hatred of whites and Carano likened the U.S. political climate to Nazi Germany. Carano also shared a variety of transphobic posts that resulted in a string of HR meetings with LGBTQ plus reps that she referred to as Disney's re-education camp. So that's what's going on. Yeah. She is fighting back. She's very excited about it. And uh, but yeah, that's what I mean. So this is from the Daily Beast and like uh, even they're saying she's fired. But my understanding is she was never hired. She completed her contract and then they just didn't move on with her character. But I don't right. know if they didn't and then they said it's because of this or or, or not. But yeah, yeah I mean, I don't, I don't know what lawyer would take her case if she just if her one contract that just wants wasn't to renewed. be paid by Elon Musk. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, yeah. there's no there's no shortage of 
of uh, dishonest lawyers. I mean, just look what's been going on the last four years, you know, and election things or whatever. Uh, but here's some good news, Taryn. Okay. And Eric, you can listen to if you want. Oh, okay. <laughs> There's a woman in Florida who rang in her 106th birthday. Good job. That's awesome. With a visit to Walt Disney World for her very first time. Oh, that's so sweet. I Are also feel like universal? it's a waste of time. Why? Because she can't go on any rides. You don't know that. There are... She's 106. You she should go on Space Mountain and blow her back out. There are 106-year-olds at my, at my job, at where I work, who you would think that they were 85. 85-year-olds should not be going on Space Mountain. You, Sorry. I don't think that... They don't have to go on the things. Different. Everybody's different. Sure they do. No, everybody's different until you, until you hit 106. No. Then you're all the same. You're, You're basically not. like those Hummels that our grandparents used to put on shelves You'd be surprised. and say, don't touch because they'll break if you look at them wrong. That's a 106-year-old person. Okay. Counterpoint. You're wrong. We, we have <laughs> gone to Disneyland many times where we've ridden maybe two rides. That's a lie. No, I, a lie. I, 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 I've had plenty it's, of trips where I don't go on rides. It is enjoyable just being within those doors. A Florida woman had a magical birthday celebration oh, at Walt Disney Florida? World. Yeah, she went to oh, Disney World. Different. Yeah, that's that's the that's the part of the story that I <laughs> Which said at the beginning. Did she go to, but it wasn't your typical birthday, Magnolia Jackson. What a Southern Belle name! Like that is <laughs> you can't. If if I wrote yeah. a story, and called my main character Magnolia Jackson, um, you would think it's either satire or just <laughs> complete. You'd make me change it. There's no way. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Um, she turned 106 and had her family on hand to celebrate with the help of Walt Disney World and their cast members. Lively, magical, watching her family come into the area and seeing Mickey and Minnie and all the love and support from our cast members and community. You just felt the love she had in her heart and her excitement to be here, said Disney Ambassador Shannon Smith Conrad. Conrad. What's that, Taryn? What did <laughs> you say? Okay. Nothing. All right, just checking. A fun fact about the birthday girl, she is currently the oldest living graduate of Bethan Cookman University, and while attending the Florida Classic College football game in Orlando last fall, her interest in Disney was sparked, according to a press release from the theme park. She only just she, heard of she that learned, company. Yeah, to she learned about it. Yeah, she's like, wait, <laughs> D Dis Disney? What are you talking about? Oh, you know, like Mickey Mouse. Mickey, what? What is this? <laughs> Oh, no, that pleasant about? man who smoked all the time. Yeah. <laughs> what? What? Are you, what the theme park? <laughs> what are you talking about? I don't understand. Frozen. What does that even mean? There are benches, Grandma. G ah. Oh, love it. Well, she's in a wheelchair. So. Jackson said when she saw Mickey Mouse perform on the field during that game in his drum major outfit, and that sounds like something Jeremy would be after, it fueled her desire. Like this is this reporting is awesome. Fueled her desire to celebrate at her her to celebrate her birthday at Walt Disney World. Uh, Jackson was greeted by cheering cast members, Disney executives, Mickey and Minnie Mouse, music, balloons, and more. After the festivities, Jackson went on a tour around the park and got to spend some time with Princess Tiana from Princess and the Frog. Tiana took her on Tron. <laughs> yeah, that's right. They had to strap her in. Uh, they had to say, no, she's not really a princess. She's an actress. And Jackson said, what are you talking about? What's an actress? And she said, movies. And she's like, what are you talking about? What's a movie? Jackson, who's an avid gamer, no, gardener, excuse me. Then headed to Epcot to enjoy the International Flower and Garden Festival, where she got a special tour of the festival. Oh, cool. So that's she got nice. a park hopper. Nice. That's cool. Nice. That's cool. I'm teasing, but uh, it's great. It's interesting that the park knew she was coming. I'm sure they told them. Uh, my great, 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 great grandma, who's 109, is, <laughs> is going to be coming to the park. What, what can you do? Right. <laughs> and they're like, well, we can charge her full price, but we'll also <laughs> get her a plan. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you know she didn't get free tickets. God, she should though. I mean, if I mean, she's really. in a wheelchair too, like then she's she... older than the company. <laughs> That's, true. That's true. She's older than oh, the company. Man. Anybody? Like, how old is the company? A hundred. Yeah. So this year's a hundred. Anybody yeah. older than the company should get in free. Uh, that should be a, <laughs> that should be a policy no matter what company. Under three yeah. and over a hundred. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. 
<laughs> um, you know, it's funny. You were talking about the the local beer at the uh, Food and Wine Festival, whatever, and I had a, an article about that, too. Apparently, there's 18 California breweries going to mm-hmm. be there making everything from lagers. Get this. Life. Get this, Eric. These brewers are making everything from lagers to pilsners. What? And, what? Hefe- <laughs> and Hefeweizens to a host of India pale ales. With a focus on local craft beer from San Diego, Los Angeles, Orange County, and specifically Anaheim. For those That's of who, all of the beers. For, yeah. For the uninitiated, <laughs> loggers, uh, pilsners are loggers. <laughs> but not all loggers are pilsners. But all pilsners are loggers. Well, that's actually not entirely true because you have well, a lot of people trying to like cheat the system. And, right. But yeah, if you do it right, theoretically, uh, it's a loggers and pills. It's, a saying, it's like saying chai tea. You're just saying TT. Yeah. Um, or like DC, DC comics. The D and the C in DC oh, comics DC stands com- for Detective Comics. Oh, so their really? name is literally Detective Comics Comics. Oh. Yeah. So there you go. Um, you said you had a list. Okay, the Anaheim Brewers at the 2024 Fest include Bottle Logic, Brewery X, Golden Road, which is uh, not a craft brewery. It's uh, yeah. owned by a major corporation, but that's right. Noble and Unsung. Four more brewers round out the Orange County field. Chapman Crafted, which I hear is really good. De- De- Della Hunt, okay, Left Coast, good beer. And Stereo, never heard of it. Further south, San Diego County is represented by Mission, Mother Earth, good beer, and Stone. Just up to five, Los Angeles is sending kegs from Crown and Hops, La Bodega, and Eagle Rock. My friends. Further north, you have Full Circle in Fresno, Russian River, and Sierra Nevada. There you go. Look at that. Bottle Logic Director uh, Lindsay Langton spent a decade at Disneyland working as a VP tour guide in the Napa Rose and Carthay Circle restaurants. Oh, man. I don't want to get wow. on this. That'd be great. It'd be great to get her on the show. Are you kidding me? Now, Langton is back serving Bottle Logic's Fuzzy Logic IPA at the Disney Food Festival. For Disney to seek out small craft businesses and really be so diligent about bringing the community in. Uh, yeah, blah, blah, blah. I've been saying this for years. I've been, you guys, long time listeners have remembered this. I don't know what took Disney so long. I mean, I know at that little, um, wine country tutorial or whatever they have like they've recently been doing a lot of california craft beers yeah but when we first started going when we first started the show i'm like why are we not doing this why is disney not promoting california yeah this is a whole entire theme park about friggin california <laughs> yeah. and you can't find you, you have you have maybe a couple of california no they should everything should be california give them a break it took them 20 years they figured know, it out right yeah uh, so that that kind of tracks with the their uh, you know their music tastes and and everything else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. man, something like behind. that. Uh, okay, real fast. The uh, you know the Disneyland Forward whole thing yes. that went to a vote uh, recently in Anaheim, and apparently it was passed. So Disneyland's one point nine billion dollar expansion plan moves forward. Disney marked a major milestone in its nearly two billion multi-decades-long plan to change and expand the Disneyland Resort. The Anaheim Planning Commission voted five to one after a nearly six-hour meeting on Monday night to move the Disneyland Forward project to the Anaheim City Council for approval. So there you go. So they're going to be uh, there's some new zoning changes that were approved, and uh, it's moving forward. Everybody, real quick update wow. on that. Um, let's see. I have a thing about. Uh, Disney. So the Disney company recently uh, made some comments about Tryan and Nelson Peltz, who's trying to take over the company, which personally I voted for. Yeah. Um, And Tryan responded. And I don't really know what they're, I don't really know what they said, but uh, well, Tryan issued the following statement regarding Disney's recent communications. Quote, Tryon is disappointed that Disney is running a scorched earth campaign that appears to be focused on deflecting attention from the board's failures. Tryon loves the Walt Disney Company and believes it has unparalleled assets and opportunities and every reason to grow and prosper. That is why the Tryon Group is one of Disney's largest shareholders with a stake worth more than $3.5 billion. Imagine how many people you could feed and house with that much money. Just as an aside note, but that's all right. Tryon's only objective in this campaign is to help Disney and all its shareholders. 
But instead of recognizing our good faith and track record, Disney claims that we have a history of attacking companies and have infiltrated boards, and we are seeking to create maximum disruption, blah, blah, blah. So there's a big fight going on, a oh, public yeah. fight, and that's what I love. Oh, yeah, it's when, juicy. When multi-millionaires argue in public, I'll always watch. Oh, yeah. Vague billionaires love Disney. Love. Mm-hmm. It, it would love. <laughs> I love Disney. I love it. It's so good. Um, it's funny because their stock, I God, I checked a while ago, but I guess I was wrong. Yeah, it's it was 114 a couple weeks ago. It's 112 now. It's been it's been it's hovering. Keeping it's up there, yeah. One week. It's been one week. Dude, just as an aside, real fast, and then I'm gonna get to my game that I wrote when I wasn't paying attention to Terrence segment, and then we'll and then we'll go. Apple stock is at 173. Love it. Okay. Amazon, 178. What do you think Netflix is at? Based on that. Oh. Amazon, 178. All the things that are diversified through Amazon. Apple, 173. I've heard that's not necessarily a long-term investment. Whatever. Netflix, $14. I have no, <laughs> I, I have zero idea. I would guess more. I don't know. 200 Six hundred and thirteen dollars, brother. Crap. What? Yeah, for Netflix. What? Could you imagine if you invested in that when they were DVDs? You would be so rich right now, dog. Their their wow. original stock. I mean, this January. Oh, here. Let me here, let me go. Let me go to Max. They. It looks they were at in two thousand five. Ju- let's randomly June twenty fifth two thousand four. Guess how much they were? Twenty five. Four dollars and fifty seven cents. If you put in, <gasps> not to be like a CNBC headline, but like if you put in money at four fifty seven, and you just made so much cash. I mean, at one point in 2011, they were at 35 bucks and then they went down to nine, 10. And if you hung on Oof. brother, you went on for the wildest of rides. Wow. You went, I mean, and when it hit three fifty five in 2018, you were probably like, Oh man, I got to get out. Then it went down to two and then it just dropped. That's insane. And then it went up. Oof. Oh my God. Can you believe that? It's not a meme coin. Taryn, it's not crypto, but you know, what are you going to do? All right, let's play my game. Okay. Um, I don't have any music. All right, let's hey, play a do. game, everybody. This game is called Disney or Doofus. Okay. So did I make this up or is it a Disney live action um, title? Okay. Okay. All right, I got four, five, five things. Okay. <clears throat> Here we go. And it's multiple choice, multiple choice. So I'm going to give you four movie titles and you tell me which one I wrote. Okay. Okay. Number one, Tonka. Number two, The Littlest Outlaw. Three, The Great Locomotive Chase. Or four, My Small Heart. You wrote My Small Heart. Eric? I, I agree with Taryn. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> My small heart. What a stupid ass. <laughs> All right. I'd like to think this gets uh, harder, but I, I feel like you guys know me too well. All right. I'll give a little more time to the chat can play too. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Third man on the mountain. Our pet wolf. Ten weeks with a circus. The Shaggy Dog. Eric, you go first. Uh, it was the second one that you wrote. What was that? My my wolf or whatever. Our, our pet wolf. Our pet wolf. Yes. Okay, uh, Taryn. What was the first one? Ten. Uh, third man on a mountain. I think. I don't know. I'm doing these kind of out of order, so pay attention. So we have ten weeks with the circus. Third man on the mountain. Our pet wolf or the Shaggy Dog. 10 weeks on the circus. <laughs> 10 weeks with the circus. With the circus. Uh, Taryn is wrong. Eric is correct. Oh. Our pet wolf is one that I made. I've seen <laughs> most of those. Okay. Ah. All right. 
Uh, so maybe this is a game for Taryn. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. <clears throat> Kidnapped. Timmy, the tallest boy. <laughs> Ten who dared. Nikki, wild dog of the north. Oh, no. Timmy's the tallest boy. Eric? Um, uh, what, was, what, what, what was the first one? Kidnapped. I'm going to go with kidnapped. No, Taryn is correct. <laughs> oh. Timmy, the tallest boy. <laughs> it just the sounds tallest like something boy. you would make up. <laughs> <laughs> but it sounds like why. something Disney would have made up. If too. you had said man, that... Timmy the tallest man. Oh, well, you know, man. But, whatever. Oh, that's good. I don't know. What, what man do you know is still called Timmy? It's I ten. Don't know, right? but you, it just sounded like something you would say at the dinner table. Timmy, at least I knew boy. ten who dared. I'm like, well, yeah. Oh, oh, all right, see, I know that one. That's when I thought of I could get away with it because like ten who dared. I mean, that's just the <laughs> dumbest. Um, ten who dared. <laughs> all right, I got two more. Here we go. <clears throat> Greyfriars Bobby, the true story of a dog. Moon Pilot. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> well, it's got to be whatever's did, next because he... he's made himself laugh. I can't. I'm so <laughs> stupid. <laughs> I'm such a dumbass. Okay. <clears throat> <laughs> Oh my god. Rick, the Mexican dog. <laughs> <laughs> my GI tract. <laughs> That's what? That's not really what you wrote. No. Okay. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Great Fires Bobby, the true story of a dog. Moon pilot. Bon voyage. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Breath in the jar. <laughs> Breath in the jar. Breath in the jar. <laughs> I'm gonna go with that one. <laughs> yeah, that's right. How did Literally. you know? <laughs> Breath in the jar. <laughs> oh wow. Breath in the jar. Oh my um, god. The, I need that help. classic Irish song. There's breath in the jar. Oh, they took the breath in the jar. The English came with a breath in the jar. <laughs> they opened it up. They came from near and far. <sighs> well, I got one more. Okay. Sorry. Can you handle it? The Legend of Lobo. Almost Angels. The Boys from Thunder Ranch. Big Red. Eric. Oh, that's tough. Yeah. Oh, they I don't get, know any of those. You get better because I got used to the the, the naming scheme. Well, right, right. Names. The last I, one wasn't, but I'm gonna go big red. Taryn. The boys from Thunder Ranch. The boys from Thunder Ranch. <laughs> oh, that's absolutely right. Oh. The boys, the boys from Thunder Ranch. <laughs> I just know I'd that watch the, that. The, the term boys <laughs> for boys. Like, everything. That's not why, but like, I because I wrote Thunder Ranch, and I was like, wait a minute. No, it has to be like some thing from a thing, right? It's like origin story problematic thing or whatever, but. <laughs> well, that was a fun game. Thanks. It was. That was the you. chat, the chat participated. Oh, still Ryan going. agreed with me. Big Red seemed like that was the the most likely, but uh, the, the boys from Thunder Ranch was pretty good. <laughs> oh man! <clears throat> well, you know what, everybody, we had fun today, didn't we? We did. This is a fun one. <sighs> don't don't miss Breath in the Jar coming to disney breath plus friggin never dude why does my thing rotate off it's weird breath in the jar like where what even made you think of that? i don't know you know what i'm too creative taryn that's <laughs> yeah. just what it is uh thanks everybody for tuning in i really do appreciate it if you're looking for more awesome podcasts like this we have so many more shows on the ears up podcast network like bantha milk and supreme resort and uh you know whatever else everybody else has i don't really know anymore i can't keep track but oh check them out goodness. go to patreon.com slash ears up and support good content like this for as little as five bucks a month you have a litany of other shows to go and check out like all of our secret shows which is one time a month and we get a uh, 
we do basically a bunch of Disney news. There's some cursing, so it's not really a family show, but whatever. And uh, you get a drink recipe. So that in and of itself is uh, is amazing. But there's also a bunch of other content on there, too. And, uh, yeah, anyway, go check it out. Also, check out our Etsy store. There's a link on our website. We have our whole website, which is earsup-podcast.com. So check us out. And until next time, we'll see you later. Or we'll see in the parks. Or whatever I say normally. I don't really know anymore. What? Yay.